Welcome to the first lecture of uh, Fire Ecology and Management Module 2 where we're going to talk about fire spread modeling. Uh, in this lecture I'm going to talk about the history of fire behavior modeling, uh, different mathematical models that are used in the Behave Plus software uh, and how they're grouped into modules and I'm going to give a little overview of how Behave Plus is used uh, in everyday land management. So fire behavior modeling uh, was studied uh, as early as the 1950s and maybe even prior to that uh, but it really took off in 1972 when uh, Richard Rothermel published this physically based model uh, for predicting fire spread in wildland fuels. And following his paper, a whole bunch of other papers were published uh, based on the physically based model that he described, uh, but that had to do with other elements of wildland fire behavior. Uh, models predicting uh, spotting distance, that is the distance that firebrands will go ahead of the fire flame front and start new fires. Models predicting the probability of ignition from say a lightning strike. Uh, and models predicting uh, the mortality of a tree given some kind of fire, surface fire spread behavior. But all these models are still, for the most part, the underlying uh, fire behavior component, the flame lengths and the fire intensity, comes from Rothermel's equation. So Rothermel created this program primarily for firefighters on the ground so that they would have a tool to help them predict uh, what fire behavior was going to do maybe for the next operational period. Um, and it was never intended to be a precise tool that uh, would determine management actions, but it's more of a tool that uh, is meant to aid what experience and on the ground knowledge of fire behavior uh, wildland firefighters get. After years and years of watching these things burn, uh, they kind of get a picture, a mental picture in their head of what's going to be happening on the ground. But these models, can provide tools uh, and they can aid in the development of those slides or those images in the mind of the firefighter or the manager. It helps people remember. So I'm going to play a little short clip of Rothermel talking about uh, the intention of this model and you can watch the full clip uh, in your own time should you choose. What you're really learning now is how to examine the fuels, estimate what the fuel moisture might be at this time of the day in the fuels that are going to be carrying a fire, have some feeling of what weather is going to be coming onto this fire at a certain time, where the fire is, and what is likely to happen. Now, having gone, the model forces you to examine all of these things as inputs. Now, whether or not you run them through the model itself, through the fire spread model, to make an actual prediction, which is okay, or whether you use it, integrate this stuff in your head and estimate what might happen and say, well, by golly, I'm gonna go with what I feel on this. And that's exactly what you ought to do. What, the, what we've brought to you then through the training and the modeling experience are some new tools that um, they don't force you, but they show you what you ought to be looking at and how you can organize it and bring it to bear on a fire problem. Um, the last time I went to Marana, I was just sitting in on a, listening to some instruction, and it struck me that they were going, emphasizing way too much the, some of the intricate mechanics of it, like doing 
a, a, a cross slope two fuel model uh, something or other uh, and from a instructor who has this part to teach so he's teaching his thing and but in the overall context I thought if these guys in the, the, stu the students there think that this is the important part <laughs> of how to use the model and, and the way they were pushing it at them uh, that's way too complex and even using the nomograms uh, some of the instructors would talk about use a sharp pencil no 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 use a crayon use get sloppy because if you use a sharp pencil you're going to believe your answer that it's exactly uh, 5.2 uh, feet per minute I know it's great because they wow this thing will predict fire behavior it'll predict yeah. rate of spread it'll predict flame length um, I'm really on to something yeah. so uh -huh. people like to have some new uh, tool if you will or some new method that they can grab a hold of I just caution them uh, don't get carried away with it the man who was primarily responsible for developing the first mathematical fire behavior model. So in the beginning, um, the way that people calculated the model was by hand. They could use pencil to do back of the envelope calculations or they had these nomograms, which were kind of diagrams where you would connect the dots, you would calculate one variable and uh, go to the next nomogram and then you would go up and calculate the next variable and where they intersected you would draw another line Telephone lines that fire managers could call late at night and tell them the uh, Observations of the weather and the fuel moistures and they would do the calculations for them uh, but now all of this uh, has been put into software and with modern computing power being uh, much more than it was just 20, 30 years ago. Uh, we can not only perform these calculations, but we can perform a whole bunch of calculations simultaneously to compare how changes in one variable will affect fire uh, spread. And so rarely is a single calculation done what we do is we use behave to look at how a bunch a range of values in this case how uh, changes in wind speed going from zero increasing up to 30 miles an hour might change uh, the predicted fire behavior values all these different uh, fire behavior attributes the fire line intensity the flame length the transition ratio, the probability that the fire transitions into the crowns of the trees, all these things uh, can be predicted at different wind speeds. We can project them in a table or you could project them on a graph uh, where things like live fuel moisture on this graph is increasing. Um, and so these different live fuel moistures might result from different precipitation regimes or different times of day, different uh, seasons, spring versus fall burning. And that's the real utility of BEHAVE. So BEHAVE is not the only fire spread prediction model. It is a point-based model. And so there's nothing in BEHAVE that will predict what fire will do on a landscape. Uh, but there are these other systems that have been developed that fire managers use quite a lot, especially in uh, wildfire management and in planning of uh, fuel reduction projects. And I'll talk a little bit about these next. So FlamMap uh, 
was the next development after behave and basically it runs the behave calculations but uh, it runs them individually for each pixel on a map and the fuels might be different in each pixel and so as fire burns through one pixel it reaches the adjoining pixel if it's a grass fuel type for instance maybe it moves faster through that pixel once it hits the next pixel after that maybe it's a different a timber fuel type and it burns differently in that uh, the thing about flam map is like behave the weather conditions uh, don't change over time uh, and so once you tell it the temperature the wind speed it stays constant uh, and the model just keeps running and running. So 24 hours a day, you have to assume the wind doesn't change and the temperature doesn't change. And we know that that's not true, but it is and it was the next uh, step after behave. Going forward, then they developed Farsight, which like uh, the previous model is a spatially based model, pixel based model. Um, but with this one, the time of day that the fire meets the adjoining pixel matters because you can uh, change the humidity and the temperature over the course of a day or throughout the nighttime. And then finally, uh, this led to FS Pro, which is the best of both worlds. It not only can uh, change the fuel type across the landscape and it changes the, the weather patterns, but it it uh, simulates weather based on local conditions. And so FS Pro will actually go out and it will pull weather from, say, a RAWS weather station, uh, which we haven't talked about yet, but these are weather stations all over the Western United States um, where they've been recording weather uh, in some stations for quite a long time. Uh, and they can use historical weather patterns of, you know, what's the average humidity, temperature, for this time of year and what's the probability that maybe it goes way up the next day or way down it can run all kinds of simulation scenarios of every possible combination of conditions and it can do it uh, with some statistical probability and then it produces these maps uh, of the probability that the, fry, the fire will reach a certain point uh, in a given period of time so this brings us back to Behave Plus. Why are we using Behave Plus? Well, all those models are based on the same Rothermel equations, um, but Behave Plus hasn't gone away because its real utility is in comparing those little uh, differences in conditions um, and not across a whole landscape, but just given some set of conditions. So for a prescribed fire manager, this is uh, critical to know that you know how much wind do I want what's my window my pre prescribed fire prescription or what's the range of variables uh, that I'm willing to accept uh, to light my fire and get the results the fire effects that I want the uh, to meet the objectives of the the project whatever that may be so behave is not going away um, it's based on the same models the spatial systems don't do what behave plus does uh, and behave plus is good support of those spatial systems because not only are they all based on the same things but behave is like the way that that you can understand how these things are working it's a really clever model with lots of little tutorial help uh, that will get you up to speed really quickly. So that's why we're using it. So this is Behave Plus. There are fire modules. Uh, and so each module is based on different models um, and from those different publications. So there's the surface fire spread model, which that's Rothermel's equation. And then there's all these other things that you can predict um, based on surface fire, but then with additional information. Uh, so behave is not Rothermel's fire model, 
the surface module of Behave is Rothermel's fire model. And these are those 41 other models that are part of the Behave Plus program. And they're all uh, referenced in these 44 publications that you can uh, find in the Behave program. There are links to them. And so if you're using it, you can reference those links in your documents. So we're going to mostly focus on the spread module uh, for this uh, unit number two, or our module number two for wildfire ecology and management. So we're going to project surface fire spread and intensity. These are our response variables of the model. And the inputs to the model are wind, slope, spread direction, uh, maybe wind adjustment factor, what type of fuel model uh, we're in. And I'll talk more about that in the next lecture. Uh, and then, of course, what the fuel moisture conditions are at the time of the burn. There's also these other modules that we might get into later. The scorch module predicts the height that a tree will be scorched based on flame length that comes from the surface fire module. And mortality uh, predicts the mortality of trees based on the scorch height of the trees uh, from that scorch module. Uh, so a lot of prescribed fire managers use BEHAVE to uh, determine what that window is, the prescribed fire prescription window. And so that's the acceptable range of values under which you can light a fire and get the desired fire behavior that you want to achieve your management objective. So in this example, um, the manager, it looks like they want some kind of... Um, flame length between uh, 9.8, so probably 10 foot flame lengths, and maybe the minimum would be about 5.2, so maybe five foot flame lengths. So you put in all these dead fuel moisture um, scenarios and these mid flame wind speed scenarios, and then Behave predicts what the flame length would be for all those co possible combinations of wind speed and dead fuel moisture. And then Behave crosses out all those scenarios where the flame length would be either too high, greater than 10 feet, or too low, lower than five feet. So this is how managers use Behave. Finally, Behave Plus has all these supplemental materials uh, that you may find useful in this class. Uh, you could probably find this variable paper on the, the web, just Googling it, or uh, you can link to it in the help uh, tab of Behave Plus that we'll talk about next. Uh, and with that, that's the end. I hope this was helpful, and uh, please post any questions you have on Canvas. Thank you.